Hi everyone, welcome to NetGate Chemistry. So today we are going to solve two questions of electrochemistry topic which are being asked in the CSIR net exams. So the first question says that in Coleridge law, lambda m equals to lambda m naught minus kappa root c, lambda naught m and kappa depends on. So basically we have to find out on which factors lambda naught m and kappa they will depend or they will be independent of right so first of all we should know what are the factors on which it depends right so first we'll discuss about kappa so if you look at this equation this is basically your debay huckel on sagar equation right and in this equation if we first talk about kappa then this kappa depends on first is electrophoretic effect and second is asymmetric effect right we have studied these two effects in the electrochemistry videos right so if you remember about the equations right which we have derived in these two factors or effects then you will notice that both of these effects while discussing both of these effects both were having eta that is viscosity and temperature right in their expression so in both these effects both of these effects they depend upon viscosity and temperature and kappa depends upon these two effects so definitely kappa is going to depend upon viscosity and the temperature right now if we talk about lambda naught m this is the molar conductance at infinite dilution so lambda naught m depends on first is the stoichiometry of the electrolyte right so if we consider kcl and k2so4 right these two electrolytes then you will observe that kcl dip, uh, dissociates into k positive and cl negative whereas k2so4 it dissociates into 2k positive and so4 2 negative when kcl dissociates it gives two ionic species right and when k2so4 dissociates it gives three ionic species right so the first factor is the stoichiometry and now i hope it will be clear to you what is stoichiometry right when kcl is dissociating it is giving two ionic species and when k2so4 is dissociating it is giving three ionic species so basically this tells about the stoichiometry of the electrolytes so the one having higher stoichiometric value it will be having high lambda naught m because it is providing more number of ions into the solution more the number of ions in the solution more will be the molar conductance at infinite dilution so this is the first factor and if you look at the second factor then that is the nature of electrolyte right lambda naught m also depends upon the nature of electrolyte that is whether the electrolyte is strong or a weak electrolyte if the electrolyte is strong then definitely lambda naught m value is going to be high and if the electrolyte is weak then lambda naught m value will be low okay so now this is about the dependency of 
kappa and the lambda naught m now if we look at these four options then you will realize that in option d it gives lambda naught m and kappa are mainly dependent on specific identity right specific identity of electrolyte and the stoichiometry okay identity of electrolyte and the stoichiometry right it depends upon these two factors okay it is not independent of the specific identity of the electrolyte it does not only depend upon the specific identity of electrolytes it does not only depend on the stoichiometry of electrolytes it depends upon both specific identity as well as the stoichiometry of electrolyte right so if you look at all of these four options then you will realize that out of a b c and d option d is the correct option okay so lambda not m and kappa are dependent on specific identity and stoichiometry of the electrolyte so basically we have discussed about the all of the dependencies of the lambda not m and kappa okay so so far that's it for this question now we will move on to the second question now the second question says that the temperature dependence of an electrochemical cell potential is now if you know the gibbs helmholtz equation then you can solve this question very easily helmholtz equation is minus delta s is equals to del of del z by del t at constant pressure and also you should remember one relation that is delta g is equals to minus n f e of cell okay here this n f value it gives the amount of electricity passed okay now minus of delta s will be equal to del by del t of what i am doing is instead of delta g i am writing minus n f e okay so this del by del t comes here and instead of delta g i am writing minus n f e of cell okay this whole at constant pressure now minus of delta s will be equal to minus n f because n f is giving the amount of electricity passed and that is a constant value so i am taking it out of del by del t so minus n f del e by del t e will remain here at constant pressure now negative will cancel out with negative and i will take this nf on to the left hand side so we will get delta s upon nf is equals to de or you can say del e by del t at constant pressure so this is basically the answer so if you look at each of these four options so you will observe that option c is the correct option because they are asking about the temperature dependence temperature means del by del t dependence right with respect to temperature electrochemical cell potential that is e right so change in emf with respect to temperature they are asking about change in emf with respect to temperature that is del e by del t so we have used the gibbs helmholtz equation and using that equation we have found this relation which says that change in emf with respect to temperature is given by delta s upon n f and here also we have used this formula and in this formula value of nf represents the amount of electricity passed okay so i think so far that's it for this video thank you so much for watching